Are you ready to level up your Java skills? In today's video, we are diving deep into one of the most versatile feature of Java, switch statements and expression. Whether you are new to Java or looking to brush up your knowledge, this video has something for everyone. Let's break it down into 10 chapters for better understanding. Let's go. Before we start, let's understand the use case which we are going to build today. We have different product and we'll be applying different discount based on the products. Let's start with the basic good old switch statement. It allows us to execute different blocks of code based on variables value. Here's a classic example wherein I'm passing a electronics object and based on the electronic brand, we will be applying discounts. As you can see, for Samsung, we are applying 10% discount and for Dyson, we are applying 20% discount. And for all other brands, we'll be applying no discount. Let's run this code. For this example, I've created an object electronics with the brand as Samsung and the price as $1,000. Let's execute it. As you can see, a 10% discount was applied and the final price which was written was $900. Let's check how we can pass NM into the classic colon switch statement. Here's an example wherein we are passing a shirt object and based on the shirt size, we'll be applying different discounts. So for large shirt, we are applying 10% discount and for the extra large shirt, we are applying 20% discount and for other shirt size, we are not applying any discount. So let's run this as well. Let's comment out a previous code. As you can see, we have applied a 20% discount as the shirt object which we have created was the size of Excel. With the introduction of arrow syntax in Java 12, we can write more cleaner cases. Let's have a look. Let's take the previous example which we were referring to and refactor it. When we are using the arrow syntax, we have to replace the colon with the arrow syntax and we can remove the break keyword as it is not required. We have successfully refactored the code from a colon based syntax to a arrow based syntax. Now let's take up a notch with switch expression. Unlike statements, expression return value directly. Pretty cool, right? Switch expression can be written using colon or arrow syntax. Let's start with the colon syntax. For that, I'll be taking the previous code which was written in switch statement using the colon operator and refactoring it to switch expression. So as we have seen, the switch can directly now return a value. So instead of creating a discount object and storing the value in it, we will be directly returning that value. But wait a minute, how can we return a value? So can we write a return keyword? No, we'll have to use yield keyword. And we can also remove the break. Let's do it for the other cases as well. And we'll have to add a semicolon at the end. 
So as you can see, we have successfully refactored our switch statement to switch expression. Now let's work on the arrow syntax for the same example. So for that, I'll be taking the arrow example which we have seen previously. Let's refactor this code. As we know, the switch expression can directly return a value. So we don't need to store value into an object. We can directly return it. As you can see, we have successfully refactored the code from switch statement to switch expression using the arrow syntax. Now let's clarify two common keywords, break and yield, which we have seen with the colon syntax of switch statement and switch expression respectively. In a switch statement, break exits the block, while in a switch expression, yield helps returning a value as we have seen earlier. When we were using a switch statement, we were using a break keyword. But when we moved to the switch statement, we started using the yield keyword. Yield can be used with code blocks as well. Ever wondered why old switch statements seem a bit unpredictable? That's because of fall through. This happens when you forget to add a break statement and the execution falls into next case. Let's write a code for that. I'll be taking the previous example which we have. Here I'll be adding two more short sizes. In this example, we have the small and medium short having 10% discount and the large and the Excel size short with 20% discounts. So let's refactor this code so that we can check the fall through. So as you can see, here we have used the fall through for applying discount. So for small and medium sized shirts, we will be applying a 10% discount and for the large and the extra large, we will be applying a 20% discount. As we have covered all the short size, we can remove the default case. Why write redundant code when you can merge multiple conditions? Java gives you an option of merging multiple values in a case. Let's refactor the previous code. In this example, we have the short size small and medium having 10% discount and the large and the extra large having 20% discount. So we can just merge the small and medium together and the large and extra large together. How we can do it? Just we have to add a comma and we can merge them together. As you can see, we have merged multiple conditions together. Less code, more clarity. Java is getting smarter with pattern matching we can use instance of directly in switch cases. Let me show you how you can do this. So for this example, I'll be creating a new method. Here I'll be passing a product object. Here, if the product is of type shirt, then we are going to apply a 10% discount. And if the product is of electronics, then we are going to apply a 20% discount on it. As you can see, here we have directly used the instance of for comparing the product type. Whenever you're using pattern matching, you have to use type of the object along with a variable name. So in this case, I'm using shirt. Java records have been a game changer, but when combined with switch statements, they take your code to next level. Record pattern reduces repetition by directly deconstructing objects. Check this out.
as you know the shirt record has three parameters in it so i'll just add those parameters here now based on the shirt size i want to apply different discount so i'll be writing a code for that i'll be adding a code block here and in the code block i will be mentioning if it's a extra large size then we are going to give a 20 percent discount for the other remaining sizes we will be just giving a 10 percent discount so as you can see here we have used the record pattern through which we were able to get the values directly but if you will notice here we are not having a good control over the conditions want even more control enter the when clause it allows you to add additional cases making your code even more expressive let's try it out we are taking the same example where if the shirt size is excel we are going to give a 20 percent discount and for all other shirt size we are going to give a 10 percent discount and for the all electronics we are going to give a 20 percent discount so let's refactor this code so first of all here i'll be adding a when clause And I can just mention I'll be giving a 20% discount for short. Other than that, we'll be giving a 10% discount. When allows you to add multiple conditions in the case itself. You can add a Boolean expression after writing the when keyword. In this example, as you can see, for the short which is having the Excel size, we are going to apply a 20% discount. And for all other shirts, we are going to apply a 10% discount. Let's talk about unnamed patterns. Sometimes you want to ignore variable you don't need when you use record patterns. Java lets you do that effortlessly with an underscore. Let's take a look. In this example, as you can see, we are not using the brand or price. Likewise, we are not using the shirt or electronics anywhere in the code. So we can replace it with an underscore. Let's check it out. Let's replace the unused variables with an underscore. What happens if the value in switch case is null? In the past, you would get an exception. But now you can explicitly handle null cases. Here's how. For this, I'll be taking the last example which we have used and adding the null case. For adding a null case, you can use the case keyword presiding with a null. Based on the new learned features, let's create a method which will help to identify whether a given object is empty or not. Let's code. Passing an object into this function, we will be using this switch expression. We'll start with the case null. If it is null, we can just mention it as true. The second thing which we are going to apply, that's the case care sequence. You can add multiple conditions. Next, we are going to check for an array. Let's do it for the collection as well and map as well as we can add it for the optional class.
let's create list and we can directly call our is empty method and we can try to add a new value into that list yo i have created a list and we'll be adding one value into it and we'll be checking whether it is empty or not so let's run this code as you can see initially it has mentioned it as empty and once we have added the value into it it is giving it as false as it is not empty anymore and that's a wrap from the basic to the most advanced feature in java switch cases i hope you learned something new today which feature is your favorite let me know in the comments below do not forget to hit the like button subscribe to the channel and share this video with your fellow java coders until next time keep coding and keep growing